So Chris, you're here early this morning, getting ready to go into your prospecting. Yep. What did you do before you got here? I got up early and went to the gym and had breakfast and took care of some things at home and I'm ready to rock and roll. So do you work out every single morning? Yes. Why is that important? Oh, I don't know. I heard a long time ago, strong body, strong mind. So, uh, you know, it keeps me in shape and keeps my energy up. And I always feel better when I do. Absolutely. So, Chris, tell me, why is it important that people feed their mind and their body before they start doing their prospecting? Well, I think, you know, 90% of what we do is mindset. So if, uh, if we take care of that 90%, the 10% of actually doing the job is a whole lot easier. Absolutely. Now, you're getting ready. I see that you've got names up. Obviously, your assistant has prepared you this morning. What is required of her before you absolutely get here so you're ready to rock and roll? Well, the only thing that's really required is for her to um, uh, pull up the expireds. We have a couple different systems uh, that we subscribe to that email us the expireds each day. Mm -hmm. And I like a hard copy, so she prints them out for me. But uh, that's really all that needs to be done. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock here in California. And you begin at 8 and you prospect for how long? Uh, I usually go for... Um, you know, making 30 contacts, which, you know, takes me two, sometimes two and a half hours, depending on the type of calls I'm making. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I do lead follow-up after that. Okay, and so you actually count how many calls you make, and how do you do that? There are two ways. Either slash marks on a post-it note, or I have a clicker. Okay, and it counts? It counts. And up, so to, up to 9,999. Okay, got it. So we're, we're, we're doing Now, I see a million-dollar bill there. What's that for? Oh, uh, that's my, um, that's my, well, it used to be my golden net uh, each year, but now I need more than that, so I'm going to have to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see some more up there, so that works yeah. out really well. So it's to remind you that you want to net a million, yeah. not make a million, net no. a million. That's yeah. important. I also see your business plan, and so you stare at that every day. I stare at that every day. It's also taped um, on the outside of my shower facing in, so I see it twice a day there, too. Okay, and why is that important? Just to keep it in front of me, you know, to keep it the, it's the focus, to keep it the focus of everything I do. Okay, well, I also see a graph over here, and this graph actually tells what happened in February. Mm -hmm. Do you get that every single month? Every Monday. Every Monday? Yeah, the whole team gets it every Monday, so they can see where we're at uh, for the month. So this focus is very important on what you want to accomplish. So today we're going to get focused and let you start prospecting, okay? Yeah, we call right. them expireds. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Hello? Hi, is this Ms. Nagain? This is Chris Heller with Keller Williams Realty. Hi, Debbie. My name's Chris. I'm a real estate agent calling you about your property that came off the market. Uh-huh. was checking to see when you're going to be interviewing agents for the job of selling it again. Oh, uh, we're not. You're not. Uh -uh. terrific. Thank you. Yeah. Wanted to see when you're going to be interviewing agents for the job of selling it. Now, I'm going to hold off for a while because the market's so down and everything. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Okay, so Chris, I have some questions for you. I have some answers. Uh, excellent. I noticed that you just kept going. You never stopped dialing. And it seemed as though you let about three or four rings happen. It, do you have a rule for that? No, I don't. I, um yeah, you can always sense when someone's going to pick up or an answer machine is going to pick up or no one's going to pick up and then just mm -hmm. go on to the next call. Okay, and I noticed you didn't make any marks when you left a message, so you don't count that as a contact. It's not a contact, no, not at all. Um, I, I make a little notation on there that I left a message, so next time I call or if someone on the team calls, we know that mm -hmm. there was a message left. Okay, so I noticed you were making notes and then you threw the papers in the basket. Now, where do they go from there? Well, the ones that um, had bad or disconnected numbers, Victoria will do a little research, see if she can find other numbers for them. Uh, the ones that I either reached uh, if there was any follow-up, like the the one guy that really couldn't help, um, I'm still going to send him a, a, a letter and I'll follow up with him in a couple weeks just to see if anything's changed in the situation because it sounds like a pretty volatile situation that probably things will be changing. 
Uh, the others go into, we have a box, the expired box with the 30 days of the month, and it goes into today's date. So anyone else on the team, you know, this morning or later this morning or this afternoon or tonight can, can go and call today's expireds, the ones we didn't reach, or if they saw I left a message, then they can try to reach them. Mm -hmm. So it just allows us to, uh, makes it easiest for us to contact them several times a day. So it's a tickler file. And so when those come back up, then you'll go ahead and, and recall those. Yeah, or, or, you know, we'll call, someone will call those today. The ones I just called this morning, someone uh -huh. will call them a little later today. And then they'll probably also call yesterday's and the days before. And, you know, we just try them at different times of the day. I also noticed that when that gentleman talked with you, many agents would have kept going and trying to get an appointment and, and secure a deal, so to speak. But you really were concerned about what was best for him. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's not best for someone to be selling their house, then I don't want to try to convince them to do something that's not. I mean, he, he had looked at his whole situation and was real clear on what was the best course of action for him. Um, and that's, uh, you know, so that's what there is to do, just let him do what he's doing and move on to the next one. I, I'm looking for the people that want and or have to sell. He had, you know, neither. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you're always looking for the ones that have to sell. I also want the uh, audience to hear the fact that you always come from contribution. That you're always trying to contribute to somebody's life, help them sell their home if that's what they need to do. But in this case, it wasn't the best for him. So you backed off. At least not now. Well. Yeah. 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 And you're going to continue to call him. Yeah, because yeah. his situation may change. When he may come to the conclusion it is time for him to sell or he does need to sell him, you know, then I want to be the one he hires. Okay, so I noticed that uh, this little cord comes here to a tape recorder. Are you taping all your calls? I tape the vast majority of them. I don't mm -hmm. do them all. Um, it's very painful to listen to them all. But, um, so I tape a lot of them, and I use them for listening to myself, and then my team um, can listen to them also. Okay, so it's for training purposes, not only for your team, but for yourself as well. Correct. And uh, how painful is that to sit and listen to them over and over? And well, first of all, I hate the way I sound, so that's that's no fun. We to all do. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, most, you know, it's not that painful anymore because I don't, uh, I I do and say fewer things that are embarrassing. So yeah. So at first it was, and so you do this every single day. Um, almost every day. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I I don't know how many tapes I go through. I mean, boxes and boxes of them. In fact, uh, a few years ago when we moved into this office, we, we threw out cases of them. Oh, wow. So it's always improvement. You're into constant and never-ending improvement. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to do this every day, I want to get as efficient, as effective as I, as I possibly can. I think Gary calls that self-mastery. Yeah. So that's what you're into. Talk to me about the mirror. How does that help you? It, uh, it just reminds me to, to, to always be smiling when I'm talking to people, you know, mm -hmm. and to check my, check my attitude, check my, um, you know, how I'm coming across. Okay. And I also noticed that you glanced at your business plan probably 10 to 20 times as you've been calling this morning. What happens and goes through your mind when you glance over that way? In I fact, just, you touched it a couple of the, times. Um, I just need, you know, it's all about getting those appointments every month. And, and, you know, just reminds me of what I'm doing here, why I'm making these calls. Well, you made a bunch of calls this morning and really didn't find anybody at home. Do you ever get discouraged? No. Huh. Uh, there's, there's probably bigger things in life to get discouraged about. But, um, no, it's just part, look, there's some days where I'll make that same amount of calls and, and get two or three appointments, and there's other days where I won't. So it's not a, this, uh, as, you know, Gary always says, you're, your career is not a year, well, you know, it's not a day or an hour either. Okay, so you're like Michael Jordan. You just keep shooting the ball and know that it's going to go in the basket at yeah. one time. So, Chris, I want the agents to know how to set up a prospecting area like this. I notice that there's music going in the background. Talk to me about how you choose that music and why it's important. Well, I, I choose music that, that I like that gets me up and keeps me up. Um, music that I'd listen to if I was going out or driving in the car. Uh, and um, as far as the space goes, you know, I think the important things are that there's as few distractions as possible and that it is set up 
to do just what you are you know, trying to do, which is you know, making calls. I prefer to stand during the day, so that's why I have the, the, you know, the built up counter space. Um, even when I was new, I had a regular desk and I brought in cinder blocks and raised it up so I could stand. Um, so if you can't build one of these, there's other, other ways to impro improvise. Um, the other things are just to have only the things that you need and are working on at that moment in time in front of you. I mean, there's, like, as an agent, there's no shortage of things I could be doing mm -hmm. or working on or files or anything else, but all I have in front of me when I'm calling are the, the lead sheets that I'm calling. Okay, well now you use a headset. How's that important? Uh, well, it's important in a lot of ways. Number one, it allows me just, um, you know, physically to, um, you know, to not be in a situation where I'm getting fatigued because I'm, you know, cramping my neck over or holding the phone up. It keeps my hands free to be able to write and to, you know, be writing a note and dialing the next call and, and, and those type of things. Uh, and I think it probably sounds as good or better than a, a regular handset anyways. Is there a certain brand that you recommend to the people? You know, I've had the best luck with uh, Plantronics. Those are the ones I've used forever. I mean, they, uh, I mean more than 15 years of using them. Tell me, as far as prospecting, how do you get through the repetitious boredom? Because it's day after day after day. Yeah, but I've, I've already come to terms with that's just my job. You know, people go to work every day, some of them for 30 years, doing the same job every day. Um, and they do it because that's their job, and this is just my job. So I don't think about whether I want to or don't want to or, or um, like it or don't like it. It's just what I do. So there's not, it's not even a, there's not even a question in my mind. It's just, okay, this is what there is to do at this time. You know, it's like, okay, dinner time, what there is to do is eat dinner. So, um, and it also, I guess there's one other part of that, and that is, Knowing why I'm doing this, you know, and, and what my end all goal is, what I'm trying to achieve, and knowing this is getting me one step closer makes it a lot easier. So you talk about your environment and how that supports you. And I noticed that you have many things on a board over here, drawings from children. Tell us about that. Well, those are just things that, that you know, make me smile, that are important to me, that, um, that are just constant reminders of, of, of like I said, what's important and, and a big part of why I do what I do. Okay. Now, everything, again, environment-wise, you have a refrigerator, you have power bars, you have things to eat. Do you just not leave this space for three hours? Or? Yeah, you know, it'd be, uh, you know, I keep my, my drinks in here, my, my protein bars, um, and that way I don't, uh, you know, if, if I go out to get something, you know, there's a good chance I'm going to hear something or talk to someone or get involved with something that's not, uh, you know, not part of my schedule. So if I just keep the things in here, that's a lot easier just to stay focused. Nobody interrupts you. How did you accomplish that? Well, uh, I, that was, <laughs> that I told them, no one interrupts me. <laughs> you know, I used to say, hey, I don't care if my house is burning down. Unless you positively can't get a hold of someone in my family, or the fire department, then you can tell me. But otherwise, tell me when I'm done. Now, your team is prospecting in another room. Correct. Do you have requirements of your buyers and agents and listing specialists that they make so many contacts, or is it just about appointments? Um, they're, right now, they're, they have both. Um, they have daily requirements of contacts. You know, the, they have to make 50 contacts a day. And that's their daily accountability. And they have to report in twice a day, in the morning, at the end of the day. And then they have an accountability checklist or sheet that they turn in each week that shows daily what they, what they did. Okay, so now you said 50. Correct. Okay. That means that they may be there all day prospecting. Um, it, if they're there all day, then they're probably not being as efficient uh, as they could be. So that's another thing we look at is, you know, if they say they don't have time or they're not getting to them, then, you know, why is that happening? You know, what are you doing between calls? You know, are you dialing? Do you know, can you dial without knowing where, you know, looking at the numbers? Can you do that? Yeah, I noticed uh, that you can do that with your right and left hand. Yeah, it's uh, multi-talented. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, you know, so it's, it, could they be there all day? They could be, but really, uh, if they're making less than, than 10 contacts an hour, then they're not, they're not very efficient in what they're doing. They're probably doing things between calls that they shouldn't be doing, or they're not using the script, and they're getting into longer conversations that aren't going to lead to 
to what we want to lead them to. Okay, so it sounds like you have standards. Standards are a key thing, and, and do you have standards for yourself as well as your team? Absolutely. You know, I, um, I have to lead by example. You know, if, if I'm not follow, if I don't have standards, if I'm not following standards, it's going to be really hard to expect anyone else to do that. Okay, so one of those standards are ten. You're going to go for ten contacts per hour. You find that pretty average. Um, actually, that that would be I'd call that probably low efficiency. You know, uh, depend depends on the type of the call. You know, if it's a just listed, just mm -hmm. sold call, um, you know, I've been able to make as many as twenty an hour. Uh, on an expired or for sale by owner, it's probably going to average more about 12 an hour, uh, 12 to 15. Okay, so Chris, I noticed that you're in this room by yourself and your buyers, agents, and listing specialists are in the other room. Why don't you have them in the room with you? Well, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, you know, I know I'm more effective if I'm, if I'm focused. If I'm in there with them, then the majority of the time I'm going to be listening to what they're saying and doing, and, um, which would be great for them, and sometimes I'll do that but it's not conducive to me accomplishing the things that I need to accomplish. I have them all together because there's, a, there's definitely a synergistic of, uh, effect that happens. They're also able to help each other. Uh, you know, when someone gets off the phone, they can say, hey, you know, gosh, you should have tried this, or what do you think I could have done or said differently? So, do you ever take their conversations and listen to them? Uh, yeah, they tape them and, and, and listen to them. In fact, I have a listing presentation I need to listen to here. Oh, one of theirs? Mm -hmm. And then do you sit down with them and critique it uh, with them and, and point out what they did correct and what you want them to keep doing? Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, recording, recording the uh, prospecting session or listening presentation is useless unless you, A, listen to it, and then B, say, okay, well, here's what we're going to do differently as a result. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's say I'm one of your buyer's agents. I didn't make my calls for a couple of days could have, wasn't because I was ill or out of town. What do you say to me? Well, first thing I'd want to know is why, you know, and, and look at, okay, you know, you have these goals and these minimum standards. You know, how are you going to accomplish that if you're not doing the things that you need to do? You know, what's stopping you? What's getting in the way? And it's typically, it's not, um, it wouldn't, it'd be rare for it to be, oh, they didn't want to or anything else. It'd be, well, you know, I got bogged down because I was working with this buyer or this. Mm -hmm. And so then we'll talk about time management and scheduling, you know, and, you know, if they were working with that buyer, um, you know, would they stop in the middle of that, you know, because their accountant had a question about their tax returns? You know, no, you know, they, they'd focus on that client. And the same thing with their prospect, you know, this needs to be as important an appointment as anything else you do. Well, you said you had a desk with uh, cinder blocks yeah, underneath it. Yeah, when I first started, you know, 20 years ago, um, I <laughs> we had you know this a little desk in the cubicles, and so I I brought in cinder blocks and raised my desk up so I could mm -hmm. stand up. So, 20 years. Now that's a lot of discipline, Chris. What would you tell our audience as far as how do they start that discipline? Because to say I'm going to do this three hours and start it tomorrow probably isn't going to happen. How, how would they start that? Well, actually, it could happen. You know, it's, um, it, we're talking about picking up the phone and making calls. We're not talking about, you know, hard labor out in 100 degree weather. You know, we're not talking about digging ditches. We're talking about picking up the phone and making calls. So, um, you know, you start by just figuring out who you're going to call and then have your, your environment set up. And then you do it. And you, and you set up structures that make it easier for you to do what you want to do. And by structures, I mean, you know, before I had an assistant, the receptionist would put calls through to the agents, and if I didn't answer the phone, the, the voicemail light would go on. So I used to tape over the light so I wouldn't know there was voicemails. You know, I used to leave, um, once we had cell phones, I used to leave them in the car, you know, until I was done prospecting, so I wouldn't be tempted to answer it or, or mm -hmm. check the voicemail. Um, well, I noticed your assistant took your cell phone away this morning. Yeah, because because sometimes I'm a bad boy and I'll I'll check the text messages or the or or if, yeah if there's a call coming in I'll be tempted to take it. So so what you say is you know your reality, you know who you are and the things you might be distracted with, and then you just remove them from your life. Yeah, and we all know what things either that we distract ourselves with or that we let in or that people distract us, and that's just a process of you know removing those mm -hmm. things. So all that's left is to do what there is to do. 
Where did the discipline start? Was it the first day you got into real estate? You know, it was, um, I, I knew I didn't have any special talents. I knew I wasn't, you know, the smartest guy around. Um, I knew that I could work hard, as hard as anyone. And then I discovered that if I developed a higher degree of discipline, I could be a lot more effective, a lot more efficient. Um, and beyond working more hours, the only way to improve is through efficiency and effectiveness. So the discipline just came from, gosh, the more disciplined that I am, the faster I'm going to get to where I want to go. Uh, and so it wasn't a hard decision. And discipline is a, it's, it's a habit. It's nothing, you know, I wasn't born with it or I didn't have any more coming into the deal than the next person. It's just something, a habit that I created, like getting up early. You know, it's, just, it's just a habit that, that you know, I created and now I can do it. You've taken the MREA book and you implement that. How would you suggest that the people, an agent takes that book and do they implement it just one chapter at a time? How did you do it? You know, uh, when I got the book, I just read the whole thing, mm -hmm. and I think it should be mandatory. I, it should before someone gets a real estate license, they should have to read that. Uh, and you know, I now have it on my iPod too, so I can listen to it. While um, you exercise. Yeah, exercise, or if I'm on a plane or, or wherever. Um, but I think you know, the first thing you need to just read the whole thing. Um, I, I'm amazed at how many agents that that haven't or say, oh yeah, I went through it or I started it or you know, just you know, read the thing. Um, and then decide, you know, you aren't going to do everything at once. You're not going to go from zero to 60, you know, on the first day. So there's just the basic things you need to do, you know, mm -hmm. coming up with your schedule, coming up with your plan and, and your job description, and then doing those things. As you do those things, you'll start to get business. As the business comes, you'll then see, okay, well, here's where I need to, you know, I need help. It's time to bring on that first hire, or I need to delegate you know, the transactions out to the transaction coordinator, or I'm gonna refer my buyers out, or whatever it is you're going to do, but you know, you don't have to worry about any of that until you get in the business. Once you get in the business, then you'll figure out what you need to do to take care of it. Well, you've always had a coach. In fact, Tony was one of your coaches, I mm -hmm. know, and he always talked about your discipline and how great you were at just putting your head down and working. How important is a coach for people to have? I can't imagine, it just makes life and, and business so much easier to have one. You know, it's why do it the hard way? You know, why not have someone who's there helping you each step of the way, who's, who's holding you accountable, who's, uh, you know, monitoring what you're doing and helping you become more efficient, more effective. Well, so it's, it's, it's like, why not? Why would you not want to have a coach? Well, but what if you have a friend that'll hold you accountable or even a team leader? The, um, you know, that's great, and, and a lot of accountability is better. Uh, but there's, there's, when you're, here's the other part of it. When you're paying someone to do something, you're more apt to do what they say. You know, if I'm writing a check every month to be coached, uh, I'm not going to, you know, hang up the phone and go, oh, forget that, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm paying for that. So I'm going to, you know, I'm more likely to do the things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. And I know that your buyer's agents are in coaching as well. I was talking with them earlier. Correct. Why is it important to have your entire team in coaching? Well, again, um, the people that are on this team are people that all want to do better and get better and learn more. Um, you know, they're all learning based. So, as a result, they all believe the same things I believe. That you know, having a coach is going to allow us to do that. It's also important for them to have a coach because it it takes me out of coaching them, and I don't necessarily have the, the patience or the time or the desire to be doing that. So I can have someone else that, that is doing those things, holding them accountable, so you know, I can focus on the things I need to be doing. So you stay in the 20%. All right, so many people won't call their past clients. In fact, in coaching, that's the one thing that we start them off right at the beginning doing because most people don't do it. Did you have anything to get out of your mind or to go through to be able to pick up the phone and call? No, but I, I understand why agents don't do it. Um, you know, they have a lot of hang-ups. But they got to understand that none of that stuff really exists in reality, and none of it exists over with the clients. You know, whether they think they're bothering them, whether they think they're unhappy with them, whether they feel guilty about the fact that they haven't called them, mm -hmm. whether they feel guilty about the amount of money they earned for what they did or didn't do. Um, the client doesn't think about any of that stuff. They're doing their life and, and not thinking about the agent at all. Uh, so for me, it's... Um, it's just a natural to, to be calling them and the pain of not calling them 
and finding out that they moved, they sold, that there's a sign in front of their house is, is uh, much stronger than any reservations I have about calling. Right. In fact, Jim Rohn says the pain of uh, discipline weighs ounces and the pain of regret weighs tons. So mm -hmm. I, can, I can relate to that. Now, on your past client, you said to this gentleman, I haven't talked to you for a while, and yet he gave you a referral, which mm -hmm. is evidence that people aren't sitting there thinking about you every single day. Sure. No, I mean, I asked the question, you know, he goes, well, actually, my dad, you know, was looking. So it, he was this, again, they don't, he's not upset that I've called or haven't called or anything else. Uh, that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. I asked the question, he answered it, and that led to, you know, a lead and hopefully us being able to help him, uh, his dad, find a, a condo here to, so he can visit his grandkids. So I have to ask you, have you ever hesitated to call somebody, maybe had a bad transaction with them and you just didn't want to pick up the phone? Absolutely. Yeah. Every, every day there's those, those thoughts and hesitations there. Mm -hmm. um, How do you break through? It, it's, for me, it's really easy. That if, I know if I don't and then I find out that they listed or that they sold, um, that is a much worse feeling than anything I might be thinking about calling them. And that will motivate me to do it. Because okay. I know if I don't do it, someone else is going to get them. Yeah. So we haven't talked for a while. In fact, we had a terrible transaction. Um, I may have even gotten upset at you during the escrow time. So how would you approach me on that? You know, it, there's a, a bunch of different ways. If you were like really over the yeah. top angry, I might just make, uh, make a real light call and say, hey, Diana, this is Chris Hall, your favorite real estate agent. <laughs> um, and uh, just calling, you know, I know it's been a while, I know things didn't go as they were, and as I explained, you know, we're always looking to do better, so I appreciate you sharing with us, you know, what didn't work for you. But listen, the reason for the call is to see, we have gotten a lot better, and want to see who we could help uh, that you know that has any real estate plans. Mm -hmm. Anyone come to mind? Good, so you just keep making those calls. Yeah. All right. And, look, and people res respect that. You know, they don't, um, and they don't stay mad forever. And yeah, they yeah, probably forget about it, don't they? Yeah, much faster than we do. So, Chris, we're finding many agents out there just don't want to pick up the phone, which they want to market and let the mailers do the talking for them. And that's fine, perfectly fine. We don't judge them. Why do you think, though, they don't want to pick up the phone? You know, I think there's, there's a bunch of issues. Number one, if they, I believe if they really understood how much more profitable and how much more money they'd have at the end of the year if they did business this way, I think they'd be a little less hesitant. Uh, but there's also, you know, um, a lot of times they project onto other people what they feel. In other words, maybe they don't like getting phone calls, so they have an assumption that, you know, everyone else feels the same way. Um, on a certain level, I don't care. What I, I never have what anyone else thinks. So. Um, I know that, again, my livelihood, the people that depend on me are counting on me to do what I need to do, which is to pick up the phone. So I'm not going to worry about a stranger, you know, maybe not being thrilled that I called them or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't know you. You don't even think about that. No. I, I, like it. I get rejected by people I love all the time. I, <laughs> someone that I don't even know rejects me isn't going to have a whole lot of effect. Now, I know that you have bad days just like the rest of us. In fact, some days are terrible. Mm -hmm. Do you ever take off from prospecting? No, no. Um, and that's why I do it first thing in the morning also. You know, I, I do it first thing in the morning so that I haven't had a chance to have that bad day yet. Because if I did it later in the day and everything had gone wrong up until that point, probably the last thing I'd want to do is pick up the phone and start prospecting. But get that out of the way first and then you know, then whatever happens, happens the rest of the day. But Chris, what about those days that you just really don't even want to get out of bed? Do you ever have those? Yep. Uh, so I had a little, a little bit of one today. Yeah, did you? Uh, <laughs> Especially the, uh, filming, right? The, the uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll say to myself, gosh, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. And then my next thought usually is, you know what, don't listen to your wants or don't wants. You know, so I, I I sort of program my mind to react to when I say I don't want to do something to say, you know, don't listen to your wants and don't wants. If I, if I paid attention to all my wants and don't wants and, and, and just follow those, I, nothing would ever get done. You know, so it's just back to, okay, well, this is my job. You know, I have clients, I have team, I have family, all depending on me to get up and do what I need to do today.
-hmm. Well, you went to a concert last night. What time did you get to bed? Uh, about 2. About 2 a.m. Yeah. And yet here you were before 8 o'clock walking through the door, making certain that you were ready to prospect. Yeah, and I got up early and worked out too. I Look, I, when I bought those tickets for the concert and knew it was a Monday night, I knew that you know I'd be working on Tuesday. So there was, you know, that was the plan all along. Okay, great. So every day it's the plan to get in and prospect. Yes. Make 30 contacts. Yes. Set appointments. Yep. Good for you. Hello. Hello, hi, is this Randy? It is. Hey Randy, good morning. My name's Chris. I'm a real estate agent calling you about your property that came off the market. Yeah. Wanted to see when you're going to be interviewing agents for the job of selling it. Yeah, I'm going to hold off for a while because the market's still down and everything. And Just going to give it a break because of the, what's happening in the market? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Uh, just out of curiosity, if you had sold the place, where were you headed to next? Well, nowhere. I mean, it's just one of these things that I uh, don't know, you know, and, uh, what's, what's going to happen with it yet. So. Okay. So was it was it more that you were selling the property just to uh, better your financial situation? No, oh, it's uh, it's actually a divorce situation. Gotcha. And uh, plus the fact that I'm fighting the city on a disability retirement right now and have no job, you know that. Uh, Sounds like you got your hands full. Oh, I got a, I got more than you can imagine. Yeah, I uh, sorry to hear that, but I, I do understand. Let me ask you this: Are you living in the property, or is it your your ex? No, I'm a, I'm going to go back into it because okay. I, I need to to take and have a place to put my kids for the time being. So gotcha. I'm going to probably put myself in some further debt by borrowing some money from my aunt, you know, until my other settlement stuff gets done, and then I'll know better off by then. You know what your situation is. Yeah. Let me ask you this: So, in you know, taking all that into consideration, what is actually the best thing for you? Is it to, in other words, if you could sell the house in the next 30 days? Would that be more advantageous, or is it going to be better for you to for you to move you and your no, kids I need, back? No, I need in? to have a place to put my kids. Gotcha. I to put my kids, and you know she wins. I understand. All right. Well, it sounds like you're doing the, the right thing and what needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, at some point, things may change, and you may decide to sell the property. If it's okay with you, I may check back. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. My name's Chris Heller. I appreciate your time. Okay. All righty. Goodbye. Hello, hi, I'm looking for the... Uh, this is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. My name's Chris. I'm a real estate agent calling you about your property that came off the market. Uh-huh. was checking to see when you're going to be interviewing agents for the job of selling it again. Oh, we're not. You're not. Uh-uh. Okay. Terrific. Um, let me ask you, I noticed that you had it on the market for about four or five months. If you had sold it, where were you headed to? Oh, we haven't decided yet. Okay. Well, it's probably a good thing it didn't sell then. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have nowhere to go. No, I wouldn't say that. We're we're not interested in in doing that now, and we're um, we're not gonna we're not interested in putting it back out there. Okay. Is there a, a point here in the year where you think you may be planning another move? No. Or are you gonna be staying put? No, we're good. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Uh huh. Thanks. Uh huh. Bye. record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. Hi Jim, this is Chris Heller with Keller Williams Realty. Uh, calling you about your property that came off the market. My number is 632-8408. 632-8408, Chris Heller. Thank you. Hello, is this? Uh, is trying to reach James. Uh, okay, all right. Sorry to bother you. Hey, quick question. I'm a real estate agent. While I have you on the phone, do you have any real estate plans or needs? Oh, are you an agent? 
<laughs> I understand. Who are you with? What company? Re residential or commercial? Oh, okay. You're all over the place. I hear you. All right, well, lots of luck with your business. All right, thanks. Bye. Real estate agent at home at 9 o'clock. Hello, is this Mike? Yeah, this is Mike. Hey, Mike, this is Chris Heller with Keller Williams Realty. How's it going? Oh, just making a quick business call. I want to see if you come across anyone recently that has any real estate plans I could help him with. Actually, my brother-in-law was talking about maybe moving soon. He travels a lot between L.A. Oh, yeah? and San Diego. Is he looking to move here full-time? Well, full-time, I think. But the market has been so weird lately, I think he's nervous about trying to move right now. Uh, well, the way prices have come down, there's starting to be some pretty darn good deals out there. And uh, what area do you think he wants to be in? I know he likes Pacific Beach, but he doesn't really know the area that well. I think Carlsbad would be good as well. You, like Carlsbad North or even closer to you? Yeah, anywhere close to me would be better for my wife, but he's really interested in a lot of areas. Okay. We'll probably have to show him some options okay. and try to point out areas close to us. Yeah, Vista, and there's some also some really good deals uh, in some good areas in, in Oceanside, too. Um, you know, not, uh, you know, over in the Rancho Del Oro type area and Ivy Ranch, those areas. Um, I've been uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able to uh, get some business from some of the banks on some of the foreclosures and, um, you know, been helping some people get some fantastic buys on, on some of those properties. Does he have any plans of coming out here soon or is... Well, that's the catch. I'm not sure when he'll be able to make the move. His work yeah. is pretty up and down. He's been flip-flopping on this for a while now already. But if the prices are coming down, then I think he would be more willing to put some serious thought into it. I mean, it seems ridiculous for him to wait until prices start skyrocketing again. Uh, what would be the best way if there are some, some deals that pop up, and there, are, and, and there will be, and there are, um, to get the information? Should I send it to you or send it to him? Or? Um, I think the best plan would be to send it directly to me. Okay, give me your, uh, give me your email address. It's M-I-K-E. S M I T H at spcglobal.net. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send them over as they come up. They may come, you'll either see them come from uh, my email address or one of the, one of the people on my team. So <clears throat> any of the stuff. And then any feedback you can give us, you know, as to, yeah, this looks good or, you know, what, not, nothing like this or need, need more of this or less of that, um, that'll help us uh, narrow it down and, and, and then not have to bug you with as much stuff. Okay? Okay. All right, Mike, good deal. Good talking to you. Good talking to you, Chris. All right, take care. Bye.